Hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, today we have a uh, wonderful guest and partner, Daniel Rusik uh, from Ataraya. Uh, Daniel Rusik uh, is a CEO and founder of Ataraya, an economist who seeks uh, a way to revitalize the aquaculture industry by making shrimp the protein of the 21st century. That's a very ambitious goal. And today we will try to uh, understand the background of his project and the most important sites of uh, that uh, very advanced, very complicated, very interesting uh, uh, project and very important for us as Elmas land uh, to create uh, that uh, source of protein, uh, very tasty protein uh, with that, uh, his, with his new product, Shrimp Box. Please, uh, hi, Daniel. Hi. How are you? Um, very, very good. Um, uh, the question is, uh, could you help us uh, and could you describe the world uh, market uh, for your product? Yes, sure. Well, thank you very much, Chris. Thank you for, for, for having me and uh, listen to, to, to our project. And yeah, so the, <clears throat> I think that the more general way to, 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 to frame uh, what we're doing is, um, there is a $50 billion market for shrimp. And let's take United States. Um, it, it consumes about $10 billion of shrimp every year and the production is zero. Why? Because uh, shrimp farming is done. So you can only get shrimp from two sources, a wall catch and farming. And mm -hmm. wall catch is, uh, so shrimp is basically a tropical crustacean. It lives in the seafloor of the, of the, of the ocean. And in order to get it, you need to troll. It's very, it's very difficult to catch shrimp. You basically need to have boats that are on the surface and then they uh, th uh, throw a dragging net. They go to the bottom of the, of the ocean and they scrap everything. So uh, last week, there was, a, there was a news piece in The Guardian that estimated that that process of removing shrimp and, script, uh, and, and other fish um, or other sea products uh, from the seafloor uh, releases as much carbon as uh, global air travel. So, oh, could you uh, release as much uh, releases as much carbon as as what? Global air travel, flying. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Look wow. at that uh, news so, piece in the Guardian. So, so, so the shrimps is very, uh, very, very dangerous food. By the way, in in in, a, in the let's say acquired in that manner because it feels like. Uh, uh, when we are eating that type of shrimps, I mean, from the grocery stores, we are adding a lot of, uh, uh, we're doing a trauma for, to our world. We are actually, yes. wow, very, very, yeah. it's a, It is very estimated good. that that scraping happens on a surface that is three times the size of Mexico. So 6 million square kilometers every year, every year. This happens every year. So but that is in order to get shrimp from the wild. Yes, but we, let, let, let's uh, let's uh, add some details to that uh, uh, that mm -hmm. component of the market. Uh, it's also destroying a lot of uh, uh, marine uh, marine lives. It's destroying yes. when you throw, when you're trolling, you're destroying uh, you're destroying coral reefs. You're destroying. You, it's like it's it's like it's yes. It's it's very 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 important right now. It's very important to understand that the shrimps. Uh, uh, in a way, it's acquired right now. It's not good for our world, and definitely uh, kind of dangerous food because it hurts a lot. Uh, but let's let's talk about uh, your mission. Let's talk about Ataraya, Ataraya's mission. What's your mission? Uh, how you will address yes. it? So, um, and the other way to get shrimp is farming. And farming has been relegated only to tropical uh, countries, no? Because you need basically a lot of water, uh, cheap labor, and cheap land. So for 12 years, um, so I started uh, 17 years ago uh, working in Oaxaca, uh, which is a poor state in Mexico because there was a hurricane. And um, I wanted to, to look for a, an economic alternative for the region. So I bumped into aquaculture, but realized these problems, ecological problems and also financial problems. So 12 years ago, we decided to uh, try to, 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 to become the first company to master the technology for the next wave of, 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 of aquaculture, no? for, to master the technology that will move aquaculture forward in the next decades. So uh, we have been working on that 12 years. And, um, and now we are, we are at a point where our mission is to basically 
um, be able to supply affordable, sustainable, and local shrimp everywhere in the world. So instead of, uh, so we have a farm in, in, in Oaxaca, we used to have a farm in Colima, we have a farm in Campeche. So we are an integrated uh, shrimp business that works on the biotech um, and, and now we developed software and automation to be able to, to bring shrimp farming here to the United States. We're starting in the United States because it's the biggest uh, market and it's a market that we know uh, it's a market that pays a um, good price for, 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 for sustainable products, and it's a good way to start. Okay, uh, sitting here in Tulum, is it possible for me to taste your, let's say, shrimps? Is it possible to order? <coughs> well, I could, I, could, I could visit some restaurants in Cancun, if you have, a, let's say, customers in Cancun, just to taste uh, the results, just to taste and get, get a taste of, uh, what, what is the taste of that uh, boxed uh, growing shrimps? <laughs> Yeah, we could send you a box, but uh, in reality, we 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 sell it locally. Uh, we yes. used to we used to, to 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 export it here to United States and to bring it to Mexico City, but we decided to stop growing our business in Mexico because uh, our technology is more leveraged in places like the United States, where where we basically have no competitors because shrimp, uh, ten billion dollars of shrimp is consumed here in, in the United States, but zero is produced. So. Then with technology, we can change the rules of the, of the game. And instead of, being, of competing with, uh, uh, with, with the price in Ecuador or in India or in Mexico, we, we, we compete with the price of that same product, but after uh, three times the cost in, uh, in uh, oh, what, what intermediation. Wonderful, wonderful strategy. Right? Wonderful, wonderful strategy. And yes, it's it's obvious. It's a no-brainer because seeing in the United States, choosing between like say, uh, let's say some frozen and semi-frozen or whatever, you know, shock frozen or whatever shrimps, and let's say natural, uh, fully controllable environment of, of and uh, live shrimps. Have, anybody will choose the live the live shrimps, even paying uh, two times or uh, three times more. But, uh, could you explain uh, just that market? Uh, it will be uh, something at the same price as a frozen food, or it will be slightly expensive. Or, or you're competing with, a, let's say, uh, live food, live like live shrimps. Uh, and how how do you position yourself? With all yeah, that, all of that's an interesting question. So, on the top of the of the of the market, um, it's so we take commodity as a baseline. No, that's zero. That's our, that's our zero. Um, so uh, five times, <clears throat> or let's say 100%. So five times that is, um, is the live shrimp. Uh, the market for that is basically uh, Asian American, you know, mostly Chinese Americans or Chinese uh, nationals that live here in the United States and they, they love live shrimp. The way that they get that shrimp right now is they, uh, they buy it in Florida and mm -hmm. shrimp uh, travels and 80% of, of, of them die. So now we can put uh, some uh, some shrimp boxes in New York, and we have uh, partners there that are interested in in selling that shrimp. So it's a win-win. Um, then, uh, very very uh, lower than that, it's it's fresh, never frozen. That's basically two times the uh, 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 two times the premium compared to to commodity frozen. Our goal is to be able to be uh, economically in the next two years. Our goal is to 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 be. Uh, unit economics positive for a premium price of 50%. So yeah, we, because, we, mm -hmm. Yes, oh, but look at that uh, from a very interesting perspective. I have big guys from uh, that industry. I know I know the guys, and not not the guys who are selling the shrimps, but uh, the, big, the big change with distribution, the uh, frozen uh, frozen uh, fish and uh, et cetera, and, uh, and also big grocery uh, stores and chains all over the world like Carrefour. Uh, from my perspective, let's look at the very important part of that uh, moment. Uh, most of the shrimps frozen are uh, sold with uh, water uh, on top, like it's, it's glazed or something like that. So if you uh, compare the actual price of the actual shrimp frozen and you your live shrimp uh, not frozen, but uh, like with 50% premium, it will be exactly the same price uh, per gram, if you will be very precise with that. It's very important because most of the shrimps frozen uh, added, adding water to, to the price. That is true. They, they, are sol they have sulfites. And, they, and so then the shrimp, uh, it, if you don't add anything, shrimp basically soaks uh, about 17, 18% water. 
But if you add sulfites and you add, add a metabisulfite, potassium metabisulfite, they can add up to 30%. So yeah, when you compare apples to apples, we are very, we would be very close to, to, to that. Yes, it's, it, from, uh, from positioning perspective, it's very important because it's like, it's, it's small detail, but that small detail making the, uh, will easily sell your price. It's from, from my perspective, it will help you. Okay, uh, let's, uh, let's move for, for the next questions. Uh, mm. How did you create your team? But because it's very advanced product. As I already understand, you you inside in that niche, in that business for 17 years. But how how to create that advanced, very advanced team to for international distribution of uh, that or unique solution? Well, um, I think that I I've been very lucky. That's one. <laughs> I found uh, great talent uh, um, in very crazy places. For instance, uh, our chief engineer for our uh, engineering lab, we met while playing, like rehearsing for a, for a music band. He played the bass, I played the guitar. This was just for fun. Then we started okay. talking and then we uh, somewhere, uh, and then, but also uh, recruiting people, recruiting top talent. For instance, our COO, he used to be uh, the, the general manager for a for a Chinese unicorn in Latin America. No? So, and others we were just introduced and other were just completely random. I think that just having um, eyes wide open uh, for, 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 for talent, uh, doesn't matter where they come from, where are their credentials. It's just about uh, good people doing, that are capable of doing cool things. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, what part of shrimp growing process on shore is the most complicated? <clears throat> uh, so, we have mapped our, our operation and the, we start with the biotech. So for us, everything is, um, and, 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 the, and the output of the biotech are, is protocols and macro processes. So we have basically four macro processes, uh, which are, uh, so from the, when the broodstock, when we get them, we have the chicken and egg, no? We, we start with the broodstock. We have very clear that. Uh, so the, the fathers and the mothers. Um, so they, the, their output is, is nuclei. So they, lay eggs, those are fertilized, and then they hatch, and they are called nauplias. Shrimp is very, very tiny. They don't even have a mouth. They need to okay. have a metamorphosis. Then the second is uh, uh, larvae culture, so getting these to, to maturation, so when they are fully formed. Then nursery, which is from 0.10 grams to one gram, and then up mm -hmm. to 30 grams. So they grow, when they are in the grow out, they grow 10,000 times their size. So wow. uh, these four macro processes includes 84 protocols. Wow. <clears throat> yes. The most, uh, and about 60, 60 of them are in the first two sections, which is uh, uh, the broodstock Larva. and the larvae culture. So this is something that we will, that we, we would need. So our goal is to create the infrastructure and to support uh, an industry of people that are, that are specializing on the nursery and the grow out. Right, so we will keep basically. To, we will need to keep doing the uh, the larvae culture, the baby shrimp, or partnering in different countries with with people that, that have experience in that. That is the most uh, difficult part. Okay, uh, will we be, will we be able to set up our villages with your boxes? Uh, how it's possible for for the, for the project like ours? When uh, I I think so, we would need. Okay. So in order for this to be successful, and I mean as a whole uh, uh, industry, new industry, it's a new industry based, it's, well, it's, a, it's an old industry, but now it will be based on new technology. So, and we need to reinvent most, most of it. We need to basically scrap most of what, 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 what has happened. You know? So right now we're in the process of fine tuning uh, the manufacturing of the shrimp boxes, the, the connection between the software that is in the cloud and the, and the, and the production. So I think that 2023, uh, maybe Q3 of 2023, maybe Q2 of 2023, you can start playing with one. You know? We want to wow. send you first just one, because then the question is, after everything is ready, then the question is, uh, how fast can we train you? And how efficient and how effective is, 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 is our training to you? Which, which were part of the question. You know? If the yeah. consultancy of something would be available, for sure. Our goal is that that people that are using our technology are um, are successful. And in the beginning, we will be running, we will be uh, uh, taking part of the risk, subsidizing uh, potential losses in the beginning because we want to learn how to train people. 
Okay, okay, it's very beautiful. Uh, regarding the market, uh, I guess uh, we we have uh, the people who will live uh, in our uh, Eka village, and also uh, we have a lot of restaurants here in Tulum. So the distribution mm -hmm. is simple uh, because yes. I'm, I'm not thinking to make a business out of it uh, from uh, the perspective of being uh, here in Tulum. I'm just uh, have uh, 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 two components. Uh, first of all. Uh, to, stay, to have the sustainable autonomous supply of uh, shrimps uh, for uh, for our village, and also we could uh, sell uh, for the uh, I mean base price without uh, without any markup or something very. Mm -hmm. very uh, but the same at the same price as a frozen uh, to the lo local restaurant just to let's say not to go to not to waste uh, ex the exceeds of uh, what we have mm -hmm. but it's very it's very very interesting project um, what else can, uh, can I grow in the shrimp box because uh, I have seen let's mm -hmm. say some DIY project like that uh, I do realize you, that you have very advanced very uh, consistent approach with all that uh, procedures and all that guidelines but uh, do you have any idea uh, what else uh, anybody could grow in that stream uh, stream boxes this is a, this this is a great sense? question and 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 I, I I only have hypothesis right now to show <laughs> we have okay. worked in, in in the in the past we have worked with tilapia we have worked with marine fish uh, uh, snook uh, and also snapper. So okay. maybe we we will be able to grow all of them in in, in in shrimp box, but I'm not sure. I I think that so the question is how they adapt to the uh, to this kind of enclosure because it's a it's a long it's a long enclosure no and most fish they need circular uh, uh, enclosure because they like to keep uh, swimming. Maybe snook, snook. They like to be on the bottom. They are like they are like predators. So they're they're just like sitting and waiting for something. Maybe maybe they would adapt best. I think that tilapia for sure will adapt. Um, yeah, <laughs> tilapia is the ultimate fish. It's like mm -hmm. <laughs> mostly parasite. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes, but, but if, if grown sustainably and if grown with good yes, food yes, and, and a clean environment, it's a good we, fish. Yes, we we we, we are we're actually solving uh, uh, the global food crisis, but uh, mm -hmm. we, we, do, we do realize that it could be also a solution for the global food crisis. So the tilapia could save a lot of lives. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, what is the tastiest kind of shrimp uh, one can grow in shrimp box? What is the tastiest kind ah. of shrimp? Oh, um, it's actually very good taste, and this for for me this was um, uh, unexpected. Because the, the way that we grow shrimp is basically we grow it in an ecosystem. So it's like a, if, you, if you've been to a lagoon, no, there are many in uh, Tulum, um, you, know, you see that the water is not clear. Yep. And the reason why it's not because it's muddy, it's not because of mud, it's because of the ecosystem. So there is basically bacteria, algae, uh, fungi, different kinds of microorganisms that keep this water, uh, the, the color. So when you have a lot of sunshine, the water gets green because there's a lot of algae. Uh, and with different conditions, maybe there's rain or blah, 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 the water gets brown. So our culture is like, is like that kind of water, it's brown water. And for me, I thought, okay, maybe this is good. It's good for the environment. Uh, it's a way to, to, to capture nitrogen. From a scientific uh, point of view and from a sustainability, uh, sustainability point of view, it made a lot of sense. But I thought maybe this shrimp will have enough flavor. Maybe they won't taste good. And mm -hmm. we were... Uh, giving tests to some to some chefs and and one German chef uh, that worked at the Mexican restaurant, he said that this is the best shrimp that he has ever tasted. I was like, what? Because at that time I didn't eat shrimp, <laughs> so I didn't I didn't have any reference point. I started to eat shrimp when I started to grow shrimp, so I didn't have any reference point. And then uh, some famous chefs in the United States started uh, ordering from us. Uh, from Jaleo, from Chef Jose Andres, uh, some other chefs in, 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 in Los Angeles. So now we know for sure that our uh, shrimp is very good. It's very good raw, for instance. So for sushi chefs, it's very, it's very, it's very good. Wow, wow, wow. But uh, it's, most, it's mostly, uh, do you grow only one kind of shrimp in your shrimp box? Do you have yes. any, only, uh, and uh, is, it, was, it was some some kind of, is it some sort of tests? So you choose uh, that, uh, let's say, 
that kind of shrimp because it's uh, diff I, I guess we have thousands of different kind of shrimps uh, mm -hmm. in the world. Why do you choose that exact that exactly? Uh, so shrimp? more than more than eighty five percent of of the shrimp that is grown in the in the in the world is Peneus vaname. So mm -hmm. this is this is the species that is the white leg shrimp. They are native from Sinaloa up to the, to Peru from the in, on the Pacific uh, coast. And the reason why uh, the rest is mostly Peneus monodon, which is the tiger shrimp that is uh, from Asia. No? It looks like tiger stripes. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why most of the shrimp is 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 vaname is because some biological reasons is the only one that is is that is possible to have a closed cycle. By this I mean that you. Uh, breathe the shrimp and the baby shrimp will become your broodstock that is called f1 so you can have f1 f2 f3 then you can start a selective breeding you no know, like dogs you start uh, selecting for specific traits so it's basically the only uh, the only species in the world that has been fully fully domesticated oh wow got it so it's it's yeah. just be, just more predictable so it's uh, yes. from the uh, from the business mm -hmm. perspective mm -hmm. okay um uh would it would it be possible to grow crabs or crayfish uh, inside i don't think so i don't think so the problem with crustaceans is that they are very uh, and also um one of the reasons that peneus vaname is 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 good is because it tolerates being with its brothers it. no yeah it doesn't it doesn't mind being with many shrimp so then it makes your culture economically viable it's a it's a it's a peace and love shrimp the other ones are they like to eat their their brothers they are cannibals so that's not good for the business <laughs> yeah got it got it okay uh, how compli uh, how complicated is the shrimp box in use because you already mentioned that mm -hmm. uh somebody should learn how to properly operate with all of that advanced uh instruments uh how many people needed uh, are needed to take care of uh, uh, shrimp box we think that we will be able to have a hundred shrimp box farm uh, with seven people with seven full-time employees that okay. is our goal and our goal is that we are we're working every day to automate more parts of this of the of the of the system no right now it's very complicated because there are some things that we are with that we that are glued with tape and stuff, but we are but we are getting there. No, um, our aspiration is that a shrimp box would be as easy to use as a washing machine. Wow, uh, <laughs> that's how long, an aspiration. How, how, how long does it take? Uh, five day, five years, or five decades? No, I think I think five years, more like five years. We are we are right now we are at about fifty percent of automation. And this okay. is because we have our, our shrimp farm. We know how many human hours are needed to grow one ton of shrimp in our in our in our farm in Oaxaca. No, so yes. we can, we can compare, and we estimate that we are not right now at fifty percent automation. Our goal is to get to eighty percent automation. Wonderful. Uh, uh, okay, uh, how much more effective would you say? Uh, your shrimp boxes as a DIY backyard shrimp ponds because you know all the DIY shrimp ponds and they also trying to grow for shrimps. Uh, so could you compare just uh, the output, uh, the, the, uh, the yeah. amount of shrimps somebody could grow with shrimp box and uh, uh, with shrimp pond? DIY yeah, shrimp. no, I saw the video that were on the uh, that was on the. On the, yeah, yeah. On, the, on the on the questions, and I'm I'm very honored to be compared to Santa Claus, world famous <laughs> entrepreneur. <laughs> so the uh, the so aquaculture seems easy, and it seems easy. So this is why, in, in my first uh, uh, business plan, I thought that we would be able to get it on the first five years to get an up and running and completely dominate the industry in five years. Um, because it, it really, it looks kind of simple and, and, and the, really the devil here is in the details. Um, and no, I, I wouldn't encourage, if you're doing a DIY with, uh, for instance, um, carp, yes, by all means, carp is a very easy fish. Even tilapia is hard yeah. because what, um, so for instance, and I, in, in this video with the, um, with the, uh, when he presents the bioreactor. So bioreactor, that's a very complex, uh, it's a very complex system that can fail at any moment. And if your uh, bioreactor fails, uh, then you're done. So imagine that aquaculture is basically like a life supporting system, a life support system 
that has to be able to work without any kind of failure for so redundancy. A redundancy. You need uh, you need a redundancy. In the, and that makes and that brings costs up. Yes. So, yes. 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 And yes. and 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 then and then you don't have predictability. So the pro so for if you're doing something for fun, yeah, you will you will be able to learn a lot. Yes, but you cannot really make a, a predictable business and a scalable business out of those kinds of of of, uh, of systems. So, for instance, some of the things that were presented in that in that video is that. There is no uh, way to control temperature in an economic way, no. Mm -hmm. So yes. it will it might work in some places, but not in others. Uh, and also the supply chain, because the, the most important part is where do you get the shrimp? Where do you get the yes. baby shrimp? Where do you get the feed? No. Yes. Yeah. So for shrimp DIY is not really uh, it's not really viable. Okay. So 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 best the best um, uh, let's say. Uh, Aquaculture for uh, DIY is a car from your perspective. So yes, for sure. Yes, wonderful. What, about, what do you think about about koi? You know, the Japanese carp. It's basically koi. a carp. It's the same yes, from yes. the from a biology perspective. It's the same, but the price is good and they look beautiful. Yes, yes. koi is, is good, not for eating. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, what kind of future do you envision for your project? How many shrimp boxes do you plan to distribute till the end of uh, 2000? 24. So our goal is to, we're manufacturing 50 this year. Our goal is to manufacture 500 next year. And in the next five years, our plan is to have 5,000. Uh, 5,000. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, and then another very important question from the perspective of the, pro of the project like ours. Because we have a lot of preparedness, in, uh, let's say in our community and our in, and in our DNA. So, uh, are there are there any irreplaceable components uh, to the uh, to the shrimp uh, shrimp farming that would be uh, uh, complicated to find during the war or global economic crisis? Do you have uh, do you have a lot of irreplaceable unique components uh, in your let's say shrimp box? Only the electronics, Only the um, and we can so and um, everything else. Uh, we have designed it. Basically, you can go to Home Depot and buy most of the pumps and the filters and everything. It's something that you would be able uh, to to find relatively easily. Uh, only the only the electronic components, the sensors, uh, the um, uh, the chips. But this is something that that we could FedEx you. Okay. Uh, as you, as I already understand, uh, some of the big. Uh, Let's say grocery chains would buy your solution. As I already understand, some big restaurants or restaurant chains would buy your uh, solution. Uh, last but not least, tell us uh, about uh, your ways of client support. Do you, let's say, envision uh, any, uh, uh, let's say, uh, consultation uh, or something, something like that? How you will, let's say, uh, work with your potential clients uh, from? I, I have and I don't know everything. I know only some sides of let's say uh, your business. So I don't understand the, rea uh, the reality of uh, let's say grocery uh, grocery chains and, uh, and also is the reality of restaurant chains. Could you let's say explain uh, for that type of clients how you will let's say uh, work with them? Yeah. So we have basically three business models that we are going to be testing. Uh, three of them in parallel. The first one is we everything is ours and we run it. This is what we're doing here in Indianapolis. Uh, we're building our first demo training farm. This is very important because we need to be the best operators in the world for shrimp box. No, we need to know how to do it. Um, the second one is something like the way poultry is organized. It's called contract farming, where you basically have a, a farmer which is which is an operator, but they don't but they they they, they don't care about the distribution. So mm -hmm. we support them with we would support them with larvae, with the feed, with all the inputs, with training, and also all the shrimp boxes are organized by our cloud software. That is the that's why the the, the company is called Ataraya. So our software system is basically uh, uh, all our biotech turned into algorithms. So and all the workflows and all the all the all the all the variables are mapped and their relationships are mapped so that it is it is orchestrating the. Um, the, the, the operation, for instance, it basically turns all, uh, 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 the, all the protocols into specific tasks for operators. So instead of knowing how to calculate whatever, it, it only gives you a task. Go and add uh, 
product number A from back number 57, whatever. Wow. You know? So, and then it distributes it uh, 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 by itself. So then it's gonna be very easy for farmers to grow it. And then we, we will buy it back from them and they will get a, a profit, you no, know? a profit that it would be like about five times that what they're getting from poultry. So we, we want to, we want some of these farmers to switch to, to shrimp. Very advanced, very advanced. 90, very advanced. 95% of the poultry that is consumed in the, state, in the United States come from that kind of business model, contract farm. The third one is customers that they, they want to, to, to have, they are interested in the final product because maybe they have a market or like you, they want it for themselves, which they would be restaurants or grocery stores or whatever, but we would be able to support them in the same way that we support contract farmers. But then, and then we, <clears throat> we take some profit, like a success, a success fee. Our business is not selling uh, and it will never be selling shrimp boxes. Uh, gotcha. Most likely we won't sell shrimp boxes. Maybe we will own hundred percent of the shrimp box and we will lease it. it. Uh, something like that, because nobody's really interested in a piece of metal, right? It's, it's about the, the thing that goes, uh, that it's made there. Very, very advanced, very advanced. From the, uh, from the business you. perspective, very advanced. Uh, it's easy to sell, actually. I mean, uh, thinking about the careful, thinking about the biggest chains. I'm, I'm personally from Baltic States, I'm from Latvia. Uh, mm -hmm. I know the big, the big change like Maxima uh, and others. Thinking from their perspective, uh, you could actually provide very good solution. They could, and they have a market. Uh, having the market for that type of product, it's easy. It's it's not just no brainer uh, because uh, the way you put it, it's very 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 competitive. So it's it's uh, it's a very good alternative for and uh, and it's very predictable. I'm also from let's say all the uh, ecological perspective from the. Uh, because right now we are not sure what we're eating. I'm not sure where my shrimps grow. Grown. Uh, I'm, I'm not. I'm thinking about all of that uh, uh, heavy metals and also uh, what could be in uh, in that let's say uh, strange river somewhere uh, on the other side of the of the planet. And right now, uh, and, but knowing that I'm actually getting the very fresh and uh, uh, absolutely clean uh, product with a Great price and great, uh, great taste. It's like no brainer. It feels it feels like that you will actually catch a lot of uh, billions out of that multi billion market. And I'm 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 really happy to be with you right now. Uh, and uh, on on your it's not the first stage first stage, but like uh, before you become a billionaire, <laughs> <laughs> because because you will you will definitely be a billionaire in the next couple couple years. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you for that wonderful story. I hope uh, that one of your boxes will be in Almas land. And uh, we are definitely willing to work with you. Uh, we are willing to help you also with the distribution to all of that grocery grocery chains, because it's also, uh, it's not like just interesting. It's just from the business perspective, it's, it's uh, efficient. So uh, thank you for that conversation. Thank you very much, Aaron. And thank you for your community for the questions.